You don't know who Kurt Cobain is? No. I will, yeah, look, I will look him look up like later him. tonight. He's a junior. Yeah. <laughs> well, he's not like okay. the most spiritually enriching person See, that, you could that's study. That's why I don't know who it is. Nirvana, yeah. Nirvana right? Yeah, did you uh, ever yeah, listen yeah. to Nirvana? Uh, not a lot. Yeah. Is that the band yeah, with like the smiley face? face? Yeah. What do you like? What do you like I'm to listen it. to? I'm country. Yeah. Wow. Uh, <laughs> wow. I like Chris Stapleton. I like Joss Turner. Um, I love Chris Stapleton. Tennessee what's your favorite? Whiskey. What's your? That's your favorite. <laughs> yes. That's my son's favorite. I can't, I'm not gonna say because I can't say. He I want to meet him though. Like y'all was on my top list, so we gonna um, meet him. Yeah, let's, <laughs> let's, let's meet him one day. What's up, Chris? Yeah, let's, let's arrange let's something. <laughs> <laughs> Who do y'all want to meet? Who would you love to meet? Jake Gyllenhaal. I just want to meet him. Yeah. Probably athlete wise. Deshaun Watson. Yeah, he's amazing. You a Clemson fan? Big Clemson, Clemson fan. Clemson? I just asked because I recently <laughs> took the boys to their first Clemson game. Justin Bieber, probably. Yeah. Justin Jennifer Bieber. Aniston. Yeah. Oh, you want to yeah. meet him? Yeah. You want to call Ew. him right now? Yeah. Who? Are you just calling? No, you're kidding. Yeah, we'll call him right Wait, now. Wait, who? No. I don't know. We're going to FaceTime him right no, now. No, no, no. You're joking. I'm you're joking. joking. If he calls out, I'll be. Pause. Can you go to a rhythm night? <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, yeah. oh, my he's really doing it. No, you're kidding. Hey, don't freak out. Just act like he's a nice person. He's a wonderful guy. Can we have him at rhythm night? That's what we're going to ask. Oh, wow. Oh, I thought he asked him. I, I, gave it my I thought the greatest. I'm great with it again. All right, like, keep, him, keep calling it just on the yeah, side. No, no, like, I'm not doing it. I saw him in concert, though, so that's good. Yeah, he's in, is he in concert today, you think? What do you think he's doing right now? At home, doing nothing. You think he's in a school library? I think so. Talking to amazing I kids? Oh. Like, at this moment, he's not doing anything as cool as I'm doing. I guarantee that. I this is that's way yeah. cooler. That's true. That is true. Yeah. yeah. That's a fact. <laughs> <laughs> But what do you guys think about it? Because, you know, one thing I wanted to talk to you about, I know a lot of you don't hang out in the library all the time, <laughs> I bet. But it brings back memories for me regarding just the temptation to seek so much attention. And it's very different now for you than it was for me even. Not the general idea of seeking attention, but just all the different outlets that you have to seek attention, to give your attention to, and not just social media, but just kind of the way the world is wired. And I wanted to talk to you about that today because I think it's relevant to the thousands of youth that are part of our church. Um, I had this thought the other day to write my 13-year-old a list of 13 things that I wanted him to know. I don't know if he liked it or not, but I gave it to him. <laughs> and one of the things I was trying to get across to him is you got to be your own brand. Mm. Like You can wear off-white. You can be Nike, Adidas, whatever you want. You know, you can, you can fill your closet with 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 Gucci stuff or not. But if you don't know who you are and if you don't know that you belong to God and that you're called by his name, you'll actually spend your whole life like trying to cover up all of your insecurities. Right. And I kind of wanted to talk to you guys about that a little bit today, not from a standpoint of brands, but the standpoint of identity. I wanted to start with you. What does it feel like to grow up in a culture where everybody's performing for each other on social media all the time, and it sometimes isn't like real life. Do you ever feel that way? Yeah, yeah every day. Yeah. You kind of look at people and you're like, you just kind of feel them out. Be like, are you who you say you are? Like, no. Do you think it makes you trust people less? The yeah. fact that there are all these online personas? Yeah. I th I, yeah, it's difficult though, because I feel like it's uh, so easy to portray yourself as someone you're not. I'm an athlete, so I post a lot of football on my uh, Instagram. And so I feel like, you know, some people may look at that and be like, uh, he's not much of a caring person, but in actuality, like, I, I care a ton, so. You feel that pressure to present yourself a certain way? Like, when you're doing something in everyday life, like, I gotta post this. Mm -hmm. I, I, yeah. I, yeah. Tonda. Yeah. As, I feel like, I feel that every day I go to school, because, like, I'm kind of like a nerdy person. So I feel like, I needed to become an athlete in order to fit in because when I was little, I was always bullied around yeah. in middle school. For all of us here, there are probably multiple personas that we put on, yeah. depending on who we're around. Oh, yeah. And it makes you really miserable to manage all of that yeah. because you always have the stress of, well, who do I need to be for them right now? Mm -hmm. And, you know, having integrity is being one person all the time. Yeah. It doesn't mean that you don't bring out different sides of your personality based on who you're with or that you can't have different levels of trust with different people. But I look at it more that 
the core of who you are and the values that you have doesn't change for approval or for acceptance. You can find yourself surrounded by people who accept you for what they think you are, but nobody knows you for who you really are. And right. there's nothing lonelier than that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I wonder, has there been like a time when you've actually got acceptance from someone and then you got it and you're like, ah, I wasn't really what I thought it was gonna be, you know? Felt a little hollow on the other end. Can you think of a time like yeah. that? Um, so I moved here in January and I like hung out, like I just kind of made friends with like anyone cause you know, didn't really have any. Yeah. And so like I hung out with these girls and they were all just kind of like doing things that like I wouldn't necessarily be doing. And like, it was like cool to have friends, but then it was kind of just like, those aren't the type of company I wanted to have. And so it was kind of just like, I got like validation with them, but it wasn't like the validation that I needed. Right. So it's really hard, but. How hard is it right now? You know, I've been graduated for 20 years from high school, <laughs> but I wanted to know, how do you think it's changed from what I experienced 20 years ago to what you experienced today? Enlighten me because I don't know. And I know you don't know what it was like for me either, but what would you think? I think there are more ways, uh, more platforms that yeah. people are exposed to, um, to get picked on. Mm -hmm. I think that's, that's the difference. And uh, when you graduated versus, you know, the, what we're going through right now is um, like even just social media, like that's just huge. But just the connections we have on our phones, um, it's so easy to type, type, type and send mm -hmm. that, you know, and, and to not even mean what you say, like, um, you know, someone can say something online, but in person, you know, they may not really say that. Right. And so I feel like it, there's, there's so many different platforms that you're able to say these things and, um, and how destructive they can be. You're so right. It's yeah. anonymous and so it makes it easier to hide behind it. Yeah. yeah. Um, have you guys been on the other side of that? Like just, just the whole ugliness of that online anonymity? Have, have, you know, he shared a little bit about being bullied. Have, have any of you experienced that? In a, in a digital realm, because that was new for me. If you wanted to say something to someone when I was in high school, you might have to fight them. Yeah. Or you would say it about <laughs> right. them, it'd be word of mouth, but it's certainly what you weren't able to start a fight with your thumbs. Yeah. Have, you been, have you been on the receiving end of that? Or have yeah. you been a part of that? I personally haven't like been receiving it, but I've experienced it like in a group message, like right. people mm -hmm. doing that. And it's just like, you're uncomfortable because yeah. it's like, I want to stand up and I want to say something, but those are my friends and they're going to be the ones that are going to pick on me. You know what I mean? To, like, so you're just sitting there like seeing it and it's just uncomfortable. And that's where like you're torn because you don't know like what to do. It's like you want to, you know, that's the right thing, but then you're going to be the one that's. But like, you know it, you feel it in that moment. Yeah. You right. feel your faith or your character or something like that. Yeah. Like, uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. It's, I don't know. It's just. I, even now, like where I am in this season of my life, I'm like, I feel like that God is calling me higher, but it's hard to go there because it's like, I'm gonna lose these friends or right. yeah. they're gonna look at me like that or they're gonna like mm -hmm. judge me and treat me the way they're treating those other people. Right. Is acceptance the number one battle that you fight? The me, desire to be accepted? Yes, yeah. yes. There's like this, this feeling that you get, you just enjoy being accepted. Even if like the person you're being accepted from doesn't really mean anything to you, but just hearing it and like letting it feed you is just satisfaction enough. Like you don't care who it's coming from. Why do you from. think we do that? You know, that we allow the opinions of people that we don't even know become the scorecard for what we think about ourselves. Why would we put that power in other people's hands? Insecurity. You think so at the mm -hmm. root of it? Yeah. I, th yeah, I think sure. it's wired in us. Yeah. Uh, I think the more we give power to people who don't know us, who are not invested in us, and who are not really a part of the life God has called us to live, to judge our lives. Right. Not only is it miserable for us, but we get so off course. You know, you get to create your own scorecard for what matters to you in living for God, and you don't have to subject that to a cultural norm. Mm -hmm. right. I don't wanna give the idea that when you reach age 20 or 30, or I'm coming up on 40 now, <laughs> that all of these battles go away. They just change shape and change form, but you're still fighting the same basic desire for acceptance. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that desire isn't bad. It's how you fulfill it that determines whether it's destructive or whether it's actually sustainable. Yeah. Yeah. So I think knowing yourself is the first step to that because until you know what your default setting is, 
you won't know how to design your life around it to make sure you don't just fall into those grooves and ruts. Mm -hmm. And for me, it goes to everything. I know that I can't handle Instagram. It is crack, it is heroin, <laughs> it is crack heroin. For me, living by design is sometimes knowing like, I have to delete that app off of my phone yeah. right. for this season and focus because yeah. I know my patterns of distraction. Right. And I also know my priorities. So when you know your priority in this season, and it changes from season to season, yeah. it's not always a set thing like, well, God is my priority. Okay, let's be more specific. Let's right. be more practical. Right. Right. What is God calling you to do right now? Mm -hmm. And then you have to design your life around that. And really, you're not fighting against distractions from others. Most of us are pretty good at distracting ourselves. Yeah. Right. How, how did you know that what God was calling you to do, um, you know, like at the age of 16, uh, was, was a purpose, was his purpose for you, and wasn't a feeling or wasn't an emotion? I don't think you ever know until you're in the process of doing it. I think God is more committed to us knowing his will than we are to knowing his will. And a lot of times I used to view God's will like some hidden Easter egg. And God was gonna send me on this chase, like, find my will, you'll never <laughs> find it here. You know? But really, like, knowing God comes from trusting God. Yeah. And that comes from the experience of obeying God. And sometimes you get it right, and sometimes you get it wrong. And sometimes God will use something that you think you want to get you to the place he wanted you to be all along. Yeah. And what you will call a disappointment was actually your destiny. It was actually the thing that God wanted you to do. But you don't get this by sitting in a room and praying about it. God, I don't wanna miss your will. Oh, this college or that college. Yeah. Right. What college you go to is not nearly as important as who you're gonna be when you get there. Right. Yeah. 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 And I think a lot of times our stuff about God's will is all about what? God wants me to do, mm -hmm. where God wants me yeah. to go. And I think God's will is more about who, mm -hmm. who God is making me, who I'm gonna surround myself with, who I see God as. Yeah. Right. And the only way for you to see what God has next for you is to give yourself fully to what he's got you doing now. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I think you have to know in terms of what you're trying to build with your life are you going for the short-term gratification mm -hmm. of having something to do Friday night? Or would you even be willing, if it took that, to sit alone on Friday night because you have some values and you have some direction and you have some vision, you might have to make that decision sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. I think really like specifically seeking God for your standards mm -hmm. and not apologizing for that. Right. Like, this is my sexual standard. This is what I can't be around. This is where I'm at right now. And I'm not saying that this has to be your standard, but this is mine. And when you live that way, it's actually attractive to people. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I've noticed that, that a lot of the things we do to fit in, it actually causes us to lose our appeal. Mm -hmm. One of the reasons I fell in love with Holly is because I felt she was different than a lot of other girls. Yeah. And she wasn't different in that judgmental way, or she was trying to be different for different sake. Yeah. It was just she was very committed to her values and I found that attractive. Mm -hmm. right. So sometimes the most attractive thing you can be is different. Yeah. Yeah. And people will silently admire you even if they outwardly reject you. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. So like going off about like staying to ourselves, like how do, you, how do we stay true to ourselves like in this world where everyone, where we're looking for validation and like approval and like trying to be someone that we're not like. It's impossible to say be yourself and don't change because the process of life is discovering who you are and it takes layers and layers of removing who you thought you were yeah. to find out who you were. So to say to someone who's 16 years old or 14 years old or 12 years old, 18 years old, um, stay true to you. The question beneath that is, who am I? Right. <laughs> yeah. Who am I? I, I have so here. many different ways of, <laughs> right, I have so many different expectations. Um, I have so many different things that I think I'm supposed to be. You know, it always frustrated me. People would say, be yourself, but then they're also saying, get better. And I'm like, well, which one is it? Should I be myself or <laughs> yeah. should I get better? Yeah. I don't yeah. think the goal is to just stay stuck in this version of yourself. Yeah. And I don't think change is about becoming something different than what you are. I think it's becoming what you actually were all along. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Before all the layers came on of right. what you thought you were supposed to be and how you thought you were supposed to act. Like I said, I'm coming up on 40 years old 
and I'm just really learning some things about myself, what I like and, and some things about what energizes me and what drains me. So don't be afraid to be open to that. God wants to show you that. I think if you see it more with that mindset, you're not afraid to change, but you realize I'm changing into my actual self. I'm growing into what I was yeah. all along. Yeah. Yeah. You guys are great, by the way. <laughs> like, this is like, did they pay y'all? Are you cast <laughs> <No>. members? <laughs> You're amazing. I get it. So. We believe in the youth! Hey, thanks for watching Elevation Youth's YouTube channel. In fact, if you like this video, why don't you just hit that subscribe button and immediately after, why don't you head over to the community page. We would love to be able to interact with you and get to know you a little more. Maybe we can begin a little friendship and become family. We would love to do that. And so uh, hopefully you would join us every week as we continue to drop episodes. And we want to let you know that we believe in the youth. We love you. And don't forget to subscribe.